in a world surrounded by darkness, there is a voice that whispers to every young heart, urging them to find the treasure of truth. Those who follow the path will discover eternal riches beyond their wildest dreams. Join us now for an amazing adventure, a journey for life with Jesus. Good evening, friends. Welcome again to Amazing Adventure. We are glad that you've joined us wherever you are. You might be in a home, maybe in a church location, maybe a school. We are so glad that you're part of the program. We would like to remind you that tonight this is number six of a 10-part series. So we've just passed the halfway mark. There's still many more important truths that we're going to discover on this adventure together. We've been speaking from evening to evening about these great lessons, brand new lessons designed for this program. You can order your lessons from the Amazing Facts Kids website. Tonight, we're going to be looking at a day with the King. Well, children, let's stand as we sing our theme song once more, Life is an Adventure. We invite the amazing adventure singers to come forward and lead us. Thank you very much. Let's remain standing as we have our scripture reading. Alexa is going to be reading to us. Our scripture reading this evening is where, Alexa? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches man so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The person doing our prayer this evening is Pastor Paul Hunt. He is the senior pastor here at the Richardson Church. Pastor Paul, thank you so much for opening your church up for us for this meeting. Absolutely my pleasure. We've kind of rearranged your platform just a little bit here, but we really appreciate all your help. Well, let's bow our heads and close our eyes as Pastor Paul leads us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for this wonderful privilege of being able to join hands, as it were, across the world to study the Word of Jesus. As Pastor Doug speaks, Heavenly Father, change these young lives to form into your will. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You children can take your seat. Pastor Paul, before you go, we've got something for you here as our thank you. Now, these are very rare. I think, Bonnie, there's only five of them. So this is a rare hat. There have been several people saying, can we have an amazing adventure cap? Well, this is for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> we appreciate it. I'm going to invite Pastor Doug to come forward for our questions. We've had a lot of questions. Those who have been uh, sent in their questions at the Amazing Facts website, thank you very much. We also have some video questions. So let's start with a video question tonight. Hi, my name is Calicia. I'm nine years old. And my question is, why is the devil trying so hard to get rid of us? Good question. Why is the devil trying so hard to hurt and get rid of us? After all, what did we ever do to him? You remember, the devil really hates God. He hates Jesus. He is consumed with pride and jealousy. The devil wanted Jesus' position. He wanted to be God. And he knows how much God loves you. See, the devil was there. He saw how much Jesus gave on the cross because the devil was there inspiring the people to torture and crucify Jesus. 
and he knows that God loves you, he knows that Jesus loves you, and he tries to hurt Jesus by getting you to sin. He tries to hurt Jesus by hurting you. If you've got a, a favorite uh, puppy or a toy or something that you really care about, and someone wants to hurt you, and they wreck something you've created or something that you love, it hurts you by hurting something that you love. Well, that's why the devil does that to us, is because he just hates God. So, and, but the Lord will protect us mm -hmm. if we ask him to. Amen. Well, Pastor Doug, we have a question that's come in. It says, uh, how are we supposed to know which voice is speaking to our hearts? The voice of Jesus or Satan? Very good. Well, sometimes you'll get impressions. You'll feel like you're getting an impression, you're sensing something in your mind or heart, and you might want to know, Lord, is that you talking to me, or is that another power? How can you know the difference? Well, first of all, the Holy Spirit will never ask you to do something different from the Holy Bible. If the Holy Bible is telling you, you know, not to uh, break God's commandments or what God's will is, and you feel like you're getting an impression to do something contrary to the Bible, that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always work in cooperation with God's Word. And so sometimes you need to just look for providence of God's leading. Uh, you'll have a peace that you're doing what God says in His Word, and that's often the Holy Spirit talking to you inside. We generally know the difference. All right, we have another video question at this time. Hi, my name is Johnny. I'm six years old. My question is, why Jesus loves us more than our parents? Oh, that's a good question. Johnny's wanting to know, does Jesus love children more than our parents? Well, the Lord loves everybody. But let me ask you a question. Would you rather have a dog or a puppy? puppy. How many would rather have a puppy? Let me see your hands. Well, isn't a puppy a dog? What's the difference between a puppy and a dog? They're younger. They're, they're cuter. Would you rather have a cat or a kitty? kitty? You know, the problem is we've got a lot of children in the bachelor's home and they always want puppies and kitties, but then they turn into dogs and cats. And so, you know, the Lord really loves and he protects the young. And the Lord is the one who made us feel this attraction for people when they're young and even animals when they're little. They're so cute. And so the Lord loves everybody, but he especially protects the children because they're more innocent and they're a little more defenseless. We have another question that somebody wrote in. Is it true that the Bible says that man can only live to 120 years? No, the, you're probably getting that from Genesis chapter 6 where God said to Noah that there would be 120 years before the flood. God said, my spirit will not always strive with man. His days will be 120 years. But the average life now for people, the Bible says, is three score in 10. Who knows what a score is? Score is an old English word for 20. So three score is how much? And 10? 70 is an average. Matter of fact, many parts of the world, 70 is the average lifespan. Now, now with modern medicine and good health practices, you can live to 100. But uh, that was just given in the Bible as an average. Before the flood, oh, I'm not going to tell you. We're talking about that another night. All right, very good. We have one more video question, I think, this evening. Hi, my name is Mikey McNamara. I'm nine years old, and my question is, did Jesus baptize anybody? Good question. We have a lesson coming on the subject of baptism, and he's asking, did Jesus baptize anybody? Well, we know John the Baptist baptized people and probably John's disciples, but you can read in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, that Jesus baptized many, but not personally. His disciples did the baptizing. And so Jesus may have baptized someone, maybe he even baptized some of his apostles that followed him, but there's no record in the Bible, so we're not sure. But we know that Jesus' apostles did a lot of baptizing when he was teaching. Well, well, thank you very much, Pastor Doug. Pastor That's Ross. it for our Bible questions this evening. Again, if you have a Bible question, you can go to the Amazing Facts Kids website and type in your Bible question. We'll try and get it on the air. Our Amazing Adventure singers are bringing us our special song this evening, and I've enjoyed the music from evening to evening. The song is entitled, Always the Same.
Good job. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? We're learning some new songs during this series. I want to welcome everybody here at the Richardson Church. We're so thankful for your faithfulness in coming and joining us on this amazing adventure. Also, our friends who are watching all these locations around the world. Now I hear there's over 2,700. Is that right, Pastor Ross? Wow, praise the Lord. Some are joining along the way. Some schools started on Monday because they recorded the program and they're doing it each day in their school and it'll take them, of course, two weeks to do it. And we're hoping that you continue to use these programs. They're great for VBS, for Pathfinders, for Sabbath school, for uh, church schools, all kinds of programs. We're all on this adventure together to get to heaven. Now, have you been doing your lessons? I hope you're getting your lessons as you leave the program. The lessons help give additional material, some great amazing facts in the lessons and stories. Tonight's lesson is dealing with the subject, a day with the king, a day with the king. You know, I'm always uh, interested in the Bible stories and I especially marvel at the story in the Bible about Solomon. When Solomon was king, Israel was at its zenith of glory. You know, the Bible says there was so much gold and silver in the kingdom that silver wasn't even counted as being worth anything. It was like stones because everyone was so wealthy. There was so much prosperity. Solomon was the greatest and richest and wisest king that ever reigned in Israel. And the, the word about his wisdom spread everywhere. And people came from all different parts of the world. One special queen came all the way to Jerusalem, probably traveled hundreds of miles with a caravan filled with gold, and she gave all these gifts to Solomon just to spend time and listen to his wisdom, to spend that kind of time with the king. Wouldn't you have liked to have seen Israel during the time of Solomon? You know, our family one time went to Washington, D.C., and we, we got permission to visit the White House. And that was kind of exciting, going through the White House. Matter of fact, one of the security guards there, the Secret Service people with the earpiece, you know, he went like this. And I thought that maybe one of our kids were misbehaving or touching a valuable painting. And I came over and I thought, oh no, I'm in trouble now. What did we do? He said, we enjoy your programs. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's exciting. People in the White House are watching. But you know, it was fun seeing the White House, but we didn't get to see the president. If I had a chance to either see the White House or to talk to the president, I'd rather spend time with the president. You know, I heard a few years ago in 2006, Queen Elizabeth, for her 80th birthday, she opened up Buckingham Palace and she invited children from all over the British Empire to come and help celebrate her birthday with her. How would you like to have a day with a king or a queen or a president? All special personal attention. Be able to come and sit at their table and eat with them and talk with them. Wouldn't that be exciting? Well, you know you do. You do have a chance. The Bible says that God, not the King of England or the Queen of England or the President of the United States, but that God, the King of the whole universe, the whole cosmos, He loves you so much, He wants to have a special appointment with you every week. You know what that's called? The Sabbath. It's one of the Ten Commandments that a lot of people have forgotten about that's very important to the Lord. Now let me tell you why. You live in something called time. We live in time. How many of you have a watch on? Some of you got a watch on? Your watch doesn't change time. 
it tells you how much time there is. You remember the illustration with the candles last night? Yeah. Trying to illustrate that we've only got so much time in our lives. When two people fall in love, it's because they spend time together. And it's so important for us to have time with God so our love for God will grow. The devil does not want us to have our special time with God. And so he's got one of the Ten Commandments under attack. And it's the fourth commandment. It's called the Sabbath day. Well, let's get to question number one. We'll talk about more of this as we get into the lesson. What day does Jesus, the King of the universe, want me to spend with him? The answer is in Exodus. This is the Ten Commandments. Chapter 20, verse 8 and verse 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That means he made this day holy. Now, is the Sabbath supposed to be an exciting day, a happy day, or a sad day? If you got to spend a day with the king, is that exciting? Yes. The Bible says in Isaiah 58, we should call the Sabbath a delight. When something's delightful, is that exciting? You know what else the Sabbath's for? Do people need rest? Not only do you need rest every night, do your parents have to sometimes tell you to go to bed when you don't want to go to bed and you want to stay up? Why do they tell you to go to bed? Because they love you and they know you need rest. And if you don't get rest, sometimes you don't do well at school the next day. Maybe you're crabby or you, you get tired from doing your chores and you need rest. Well, not only does your body need physical rest, your soul, your spirit, your mind needs spiritual rest. And God has outlined in his word a time every week when we put aside mowing the lawn, we put aside uh, our homework, you don't have to go to the mall and watch mom shop. It's a time to rest and to spend time with the Lord and with your family and a time to recharge your battery spiritually. Number two, which day is the Sabbath? And does it matter? The Bible says, Exodus 20, I heard many of you knew the answer to that. Say it with me. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Now, how many days in a month? 30. About 30. Do you know why? Because much of the world, all these civilizations, they had a month with about 27 to 30 days because that's how long it takes for the, the moon to go through a complete cycle from full moon back to full moon. That's where you get the word month from moon. How many days in a year? <laughs> Some of you got that one wrong. 365. You know why? Because it takes 365 days. Matter of fact, I got a world back here. It takes 365 days for the earth to go completely around the sun. I may use this again later. We'll see what happens. How many days in a week? Seven. Why? Seven. Anything in the sun, moon, or stars that gives us a seven-day week? Everywhere in the world, the countries have a seven-day week. Why? There's only one place you can trace a seven-day week to. It's not in the stars, it's in the Word. Even in countries like China where they don't believe in the Bible, in some of the communist countries, and countries of other religions, they still have a seven-day week. It's because in the Bible, God created the world in seven days and all the nations of the world adopted that. And God set aside one day as a special day of rest, and it's the seventh day. Let's read about this. Now, in Mark 16, verse 1 and 2, we're going to find out what day is the seventh day. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, this is talking about after Jesus died and he was r raising from the dead, very early in the morning on the first day of the week, the Bible tells us they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Now, who knows what day of the week did Jesus rise from the dead? Sunday. Sunday. That's right. That's the first day of the week. If you look in any dictionary, it'll say Sunday, the first day of the week. If you look on a normal calendar, it'll show first day of the week, Sunday. Jesus rose Sunday morning, or what we would call the morning of the first day of the week. What day then is the seventh day? 
Saturday. Matter of fact, if you don't believe Pastor Doug, you can look in the encyclopedia, you can look in the dictionary. It'll say seventh day, Saturday, seventh day of the week. Now, God says that he's blessed the seventh day and he wants us to remember the seventh day, but a lot of people are forgetting about that. And that's a very important truth the Lord wants us to learn. Because the more time we spend with God, the more we know him. The more we know him, the more we love him. The more we love him, the better we serve him. The devil does not want you to know the truth about this because he doesn't want you to have the power of love for the Lord. You know something interesting? In 105 different languages of the world, the way you say the seventh day of the week is the word for Sabbath day. Matter of fact, uh, I speak in Russian, it's Subota. Who here speaks Spanish? We got some of you speak Spanish. How do you say Saturday in Spanish? Sabado. Oh, a lot of you knew that. Sabado, right? And it's not only that way in Spanish, in English, or rather in Russian, and many different languages, but 105 languages, their word for Saturday is the equivalent of Sabbath day. Matter of fact, in Persian, their word for the seventh day is the pleasantest day of the week. And so this goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel when everybody kept the same day, but something happened. Question number three, where did the Sabbath come from and how long has it been a special day for our king? We're gonna to go to the Bible for our answer. All the way back, you got your Bibles? All the way back in the very beginning of the Bible, who knows what the first book of the Bible is? Genesis, Genesis in chapter one of the Bible. You can read, of course, verse one. In the beginning, you can read it off the screen if you don't have a Bible with you, those who are watching. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now you go to chapter 2, and it says in verse 2, And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And so, right at the very beginning, God established the Sabbath. That was part of God's perfect plan. Now, did Adam and Eve, when God made the Sabbath, was there any sin in the world? That was part of God's perfect plan long before sin. And God never changed it. It's still part of his perfect plan. And it says that God rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Did God rest because he was tired? Does God ever get tired? We'd be in trouble if God got tired and didn't take care of us. God rested as an example for you and me. He spent special time with Adam and Eve on that time. Then the Lord did something else. Then God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God created and made. Now I want you to notice something. Three times in the beginning of the Bible it says the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. When God does something three times like that, that's a symbol. The number three is a symbol for God like that. Because you got God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. The angels say, holy, holy, holy. God says the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. In the beginning of the Bible, in the end of the Bible, there's a number for the beast. Who knows what that number is for the beast? Three, six, six. six, six, six. That's right. Front of the Bible, God says the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. In the end of the Bible, it's going six, six, six. That's the number for man. The number for God is a special number of seven. And so this is a very important thing for us to learn. Number four, does God want everyone to worship him on the Sabbath day? And what do the Ten Commandments say? First of all, Jesus says in Mark chapter 2, verse 27, I hope you can all read this, the Sabbath was made for Jews. Is that what that says? Isn't that how you spell Jews? M-A-N. No. You remember Jesus was a Jew and he preached to Jewish people. And some folks have said, well, since Moses was a Jew and he wrote the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath is just for Jews. Did Jesus say it was for Jews or for man, meaning mankind, meaning humans? How many humans here? Did anyone not raise their hand? <laughs> Any aliens here? No. <laughs> I knew you'd do that. All right, let's go back and let's read what the Ten Commandments say. Exodus 20, verse 8. Now, let's be reverent. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You know why God said remember? Because he knew that people would forget. Do you know that God didn't say remember the Sabbath day and, and make it holy? It already is holy. 
He said, we keep it holy. We can't make a day holy. God says it is holy. I want you to keep it the way I made it. Six days you should labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Jewish people. Is that what it says? No. Oh, no, it says the Sabbath of the Lord, your God. In it you shall not do any work. You or your son, he wants the children to rest, or your daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your cattle, nor the stranger. He even wants the animals. Back then they used to ride the horses to pull the plow and the donkeys and the, and the oxen and the goats, and they all got to rest. So if the Lord even wants the animals to rest, do you think the Sabbath is just for Jews or is it for all the world? Nor the cattle, nor the stranger who is within your gates. For, here's why, in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, and he rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. God did something very special to this day. He didn't do it any other day. Now, I'm so thankful that uh, the Bachelor family is able to join me. I'd like to invite Stephen, if you could grab that table for me. Stephen Bachelor is here. And if Mrs. Bachelor could come up front, maybe she's going to help me with an illustration. And uh, I'd like to demonstrate something for you here that uh, will help you to understand that there is a difference in days. And I'll let you get, this is Mrs. Bachelor. Can you all say, hi, Mrs. Bachelor? Hi, Mrs. Bachelor. Okay, this is Stephen Bachelor. Can you say, hi, Stephen? Hi, Stephen. I wanted him to help even though he's a little older than the average age for the uh, Amazing Adventure kids here. Okay, so here we've got seven cups. And I'm gonna ask Mrs. Bachelor to help me with this illustration because I'm afraid that I would spill something here. Let me just see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just want to double check, okay. Now each one of these represents a day of the week. And on the first day, let's put a little water in the first day. Who knows what God made the first day? What do you make? Light. First day, God made light. All right, on the second day, God, he separated the atmosphere, the land and the, or the uh, the clouds and the land and he created the atmosphere the third day God created the land and he made the vegetation on the fourth day God made the Sun the moon and the stars on the fifth day God made the creatures in the sea and the creatures in the air meaning the fish and the birds on the sixth day God made the, uh, the animals the land animals and he also made man and as the crowning act of his creation, God made woman, woman, right? Okay, but God wasn't done. How many days in the week? Seven. What did God make on the seventh day? Seven. He, didn't make, he didn't make anything you can touch? No. He didn't make anything you can see? No. Oh, but he did. God did something special to the seventh day. It says that he made it. That must have been magic water, huh? The Bible says God rested on that day, God blessed that day, and God sanctified that day. That day is different than every other day, isn't it? Can you see the difference? And he's got something very sweet for you in that day that he doesn't want you to miss, but the devil wants you to forget about it. Now I haven't thought about how we're going to get rid of all this. Here, you can, you can pour that all back in there, dear. Okay. Uh, except this one. Okay. <laughs> And I'm going to go on with my lesson here. All right. Now, is the Sabbath just for Jews? Listen to what it says in Isaiah chapter 56, verse 6 and 7. Also, the sons of the foreigner. These are people who aren't even part of the Jewish nation. That means children from all over the world, too, who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. It says, to be his servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant. This is for people everywhere. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them, can you read that word, make them joyful in my house of prayer. He says, the sons of the stranger, foreigners, people from all over the world. The Sabbath was for everybody and it still is. Now some people thought, well didn't Moses, didn't he write the Ten Commandments and didn't he give it to the Jewish nation? Didn't the Sabbath begin with Moses? No, Sabbath goes back to Adam and Eve. 
and I can prove that the Sabbath day actually began long before they got to Mount Sinai and God wrote it with his finger and spoke it with his voice. You remember when Moses brought the children of Israel across the Red Sea and uh, they went into the wilderness and they had no food and the people got hungry. So what did God do? The manna came down from heaven. Matter of fact, six days a week manna came down from heaven. They'd gather it and they'd eat it. And I suppose those children had fun going out and just picking their, their breakfast up off the, the, the ground and the little bushes out there, these little round things that tasted like honey wafers. And then they would eat them. But on the seventh day, there wasn't any. They'd get twice as much on Friday. Well, some of them went out looking for it on the seventh day and they didn't find it. Let me read this to you. Exodus 16, verse 25. Then Moses said, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the fields. They would gather twice as much of the manna on Friday and there would not be any of it on the Sabbath day. Now notice something. In Exodus chapter 16, that's when you find the story about the manna and God is talking about the Sabbath as though they know what it is. He's not given them the Ten Commandments yet. The Ten Commandments don't come until Exodus chapter 20. And so I think it's very clear from the Bible that uh, the Sabbath goes all the way back. All right, question number five. Why do so many people worship God on Sunday now? Have the Ten Commandments been changed? Does the Lord change? Didn't the Bible say, I am the Lord, I change not? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever in the book of Hebrews. But many people haven't heard the truth. I remember I grew up, and you know what? My mom is Jewish, and I should have known about the Seventh-day Sabbath, but when I first became a Christian, I never heard of it. And a lot of dear Christian people don't know about it. Some pastors do know, but they're pretending they don't see it. It's a very plain truth. Matter of fact, there's a church here that keeps the Sabbath day. There's another denomination across the street that keeps the Sabbath day. More and more churches around the world are learning the truth about the Sabbath. Before Jesus comes back, a lot of people are returning to the Bible truth. It says in Ezekiel 22, verse 26, her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. Even some pastors and priests are hiding their eyes from it. It says they've hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths. God foretold in the Bible a long time ago that this was going to happen. You know why? Sometimes it's easier to give a person some money than to give them your time. There's some dads, it's easier to give their children a birthday present than to give them a day. And God says, if you'll show me that you love me, give me your time. Do you know what life is made of? Life is made of time. And every Sabbath when we give the Lord our time, we're giving him our life. I believe he gives us more life and longer life when we give him our time. You know why so many people die in the world today? It's called stress. And people get all tight and they get indigestion and they get heartburn because there's so many pressures and so many worries. And a lot of it's because people have forgotten about the Sabbath day. And God says, give me your time and rest. I'll help you get stronger again. It's like after a good night's sleep, you wake up, you feel really good and you got lots of energy. God wants us to have spiritual energy too. Matthew chapter 15. Jesus said a lot of people are keeping other days, but it's just a tradition. Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? That's Matthew 15 verse 3. Some people are breaking the commandments of God and keeping other days when God says they should keep the seventh day holy, and it does matter. Did God bless the first day of the week? Does it say anywhere in the Bible he blessed the first day? Does it say anywhere in the Bible he sanctified the first day or made it holy? No, God has taken one day and he's made it a special day. He says, my covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my mouth. Now, I'll tell you what, not only are two of the bachelor boys here today, but Pastor Ross has a son. He's got two of his boys with him, but I'm going to bring Justin up for this illustration. I hope you guys don't mind. And I'm going to ask him to go into the mystery box here and see if you find something that looks like a party could happen. Go ahead, open up all the way. What do we got there? Let's go ahead, let's pull that out of there. See if you can get that out of there in one piece. All right, you can hang on here. I'll tell you what, let's do this, if you don't mind. Just leave that right there for a second. Go ahead, let's take that, that's good. 
You guys want to have a quick party? All right, let's go take that. Let's see. Matter of fact, we might even have a few extra ones. We do. All right, let's see now. Just a second here. We're not, we're not quite done. I want to have a party here. Let me get this thing over my glasses. There we go. All right. Now, I'm sure that's all natural ingredients. Um, you got talking to my tie here, Justin. When is your birthday? September 16th. What's today? I tell you what, today we're going to celebrate your birthday. Let me see here. Let me get this. Hang on a second. Oh, come on. Don't do that to me. <laughs> wow, it's a flamethrower. All right. Go ahead, blow your gazoo there. Blow hard. You want to celebrate? Blow hard for a second. Okay. That'll work. All right, now, that's, that's good. Now we're going to sing Happy Birthday to Justin real quick, okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Justin. Happy birthday to you. All right, you know what that means? Now, all right, all right, all right. I trust you guys. Now that, what's the date today? September 17th. When is his birthday? So from now on, his birthday is going to be September 17th. Is that okay? No. But we just sang to you and we just blew our gazoos and you got the balloon and it says happy birthday, so we're going to vote to change your birthday to the 17th. No. Why not? Because, I'm, because I wasn't born today. What day were you born? The 16th. So no matter how loud we sing, it won't change that, huh? Nope. Your mom, she won't understand? Jean, can we just change it now to the 17th? Officially, we'll just write it up here. We all sang. All right, you get the point? You can't change it. It doesn't matter what tradition does. You want to blow that out? Say a prayer, blow it out. Let's pray it doesn't catch you. Okay. You can take that with you back to your dad. You can take, yeah, don't blow on it. All right, let's collect our gazoos. <laughs> oh, I knew I was forgetting something. All right, do you see? Now, just because everybody decides, well, everybody's now keeping the first day as the Sabbath, or, you know, in the Muslim world, they keep the sixth day, Friday, as the Sabbath. Does that change God's law? You mean, can people all vote to change the law of God? Will it change the Ten Commandments? God doesn't change. Remember, what needs changing? We need change. God is perfect. What is a Christian? Question number six. A Christian follows Jesus, right? Did Jesus keep the seventh day Sabbath? We got several verses here. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. As his custom was, that means his behavior, his pattern, he went into the church, the synagogue, on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read the scripture. What is a custom? Is a custom something you do one time or many times? A custom means it's a habit, your pattern. Ever since Jesus was a little boy, he went to the synagogue every Sabbath day and he'd read the Bible and he'd pray and he was with his family. That was his custom. The Bible never says that Jesus gave that up either. And again, Mark chapter 6, verse 2. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Jesus went to church every Sabbath day. What day of the week did he go? First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, or? Seventh day. Seventh day. Why seventh day? That's the day that he blessed and made holy. Now, let me get you to think about something. Who is it that wrote the Ten Commandments? Jesus did. With his own finger. See, Jesus is God the Son. And it's his creation. The Bible says in, First John, or in the Gospel of John, all things that were made were made by him. Nothing was made without him that was made, including the law of God. So when Jesus made the Sabbath, it was perfect. Why would he change it? Question number seven. Should we keep Sunday as a Sabbath day because Jesus rose on that day? No. Now, is it important that Jesus rose on Sunday? It's important that Jesus rose. Who knows what day of the week did Jesus die on the cross? Friday, that's good. Is that an important day? Wasn't that important? 
And what day did Jesus have? What evening was it when he had the Last Supper? Thursday night, what we would call Thursday night. Is that important too? Jesus did important things on many days. But where in the Bible does he tell us that that makes it a new Sabbath day? He doesn't. The only day that Jesus set up as the Sabbath is the seventh day. So, let's go on. Should we keep Sunday because Jesus rose on that day? Did the apostles worship on Sunday? Let's find out what the Bible says. Acts 17, in verse 2, Then Paul, as his custom was, he went to them for three Sabbaths, and he reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Paul is the Apostle Paul. Paul didn't become an Apostle until years after Jesus died. So long after Jesus died, the Apostles are still keeping the Seventh-day Sabbath. And again it says, He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, not just with Jews, he persuaded both Jews and Greeks. Now I'm sort of half and half. I'm half Gentile. My father was a Baptist and my mother was a Jew. And uh, so I can speak from both perspectives on this. Again, Acts chapter 13, verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, it says the Gentiles, a Gentile is anybody who's not a Jew. The Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sunday. What does it say? The next what? Even the Gentiles, the non-Jews, knew that Paul was going to be in the church, the synagogue, on the seventh days, not on Sunday. So they said, well, we know what day the Sabbath is. Can you talk to us again next Sabbath? They didn't say next Sunday. And this is long after Jesus had risen and gone to heaven. Matter of fact, Jesus prophesying about the end of time, listen to what the Lord said. There might be a time when we've got to run for our lives because of the tribulation and problems. He said, pray that your flight, now flight there doesn't mean your American Airlines flight. It means flight means like you run and you flee for your life. Pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Did Jesus looking down in prophecy know that God's people would still be keeping the Sabbath? This is important to the Lord because he loves us and he wants time with us. The Bible promises blessings to those who keep the Sabbath. Don't you want that blessing? The day is not cursed. God says he blessed the day. And some people come to, they come to church every week and they miss the blessings. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, I'm in Isaiah 58, 13, from doing your pleasure on my holy day. It's not a day for doing our regular activities. It's a holy day for God. He says, therefore, you'll call the Sabbath a delight. God calls the Sabbath my holy day. And again, Jesus says in Mark chapter 2, verse 28, Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. God tells us that He is the Lord of the Sabbath day. It's very important to Him. Question number eight. If God didn't change the seventh day Sabbath to Sunday, then how did this happen? Why are there so many people around the world that go to church on the first day of the week on Sunday, and they call it the Sabbath, but it's not the day that God set aside? Well, you look in history, it'll tell you. Jesus knew this was going to happen. He knew that there would be a sinister power that would try to change it. Daniel 7.25 said this beast power would think or intend to change times and laws. Do you know there's only one of the Ten Commandments that is both a law and a time? Which commandment is that? The fourth commandment about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath's a time and it's a law. And the Bible foretold this was going to happen. There was a Roman emperor that came along by the name of Constantine. And you know, for a while there, in Rome, Christianity was illegal. If you were a Christian, you had to hide your religion. It was very unpopular. Christians were being fed to the lions. Some of the Roman emperors tried to kill all the Christians. They would throw them in the arena to uh, be trampled by elephants, or they'd burn them to death. Many of the Christians developed cities underground called catacombs because they had to hide. The religion was against the law. But it was so true and it was changing hearts and it gave them such peace that it kept growing and spreading. More and more people wanted to be Christians. Christians were happy. They had peace. So Constantine became emperor. And the Romans in, in uh, Rome, the pagans, they worshipped the sun and the moon and the stars. That's where you get the word Sunday. That was the day they worshipped the sun. Monday was the day they worshipped the, who knows, the moon. Saturday was a day for worshipping the planet Saturn. 
Thursday was the day of Thor, the god of thunder. They had all these different pagan gods they worshipped. In the Bible, the days don't have names like that. They're numbered. First day, sixth, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. The sixth day, Friday, is called the preparation day and then the Sabbath day. Well, Constantine's empire was split between pagans and Christians. And he said, look, Christians aren't hurting anybody. We may as well legalize the religion. So he made a law legalizing Christianity. And he is the one who established Sunday as a day of worship. This is right from the Encyclopedia Britannica. That was not written by Pastor Doug or by Pastor Doug's church. It's written by people who are just writing history. It says, the earliest recognition of the observance of Sunday is a constitution of Constantine, this Roman emperor, in 321 AD. That means AD means Anno Domini or after the death of Jesus. 321 years after Jesus, they started changing it little by little. And the Jews were not popular. And some of the Christians said, we don't want to worship the same day as the Jews. We want to do something new and different. Let's start worshiping on the same day the pagans worship the sun. And little by little, over hundreds of years, many of the Christians gave up the day God blessed and started observing the day that was blessed and worshiped by the pagans, worshiping the sun. And you can also read in Matthew chapter 15, verse 9, a lot of people might be very sincere, but it says here, Jesus said, in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Some people are teaching man-made things, but they're not God's will, and it hurts the Lord. So can we know what day that day is? Luke chapter 23. The day Jesus died was called the preparation day, or who knows what day that is? Friday. And the Sabbath drew near. And then it says in the Bible, from evening to evening, we're to celebrate our Sabbaths. All right, let me see. You're real close. Mitchell, come up, come here. I'm sorry. All right. You remember this light? Yeah. Go over there a little ways, further back by the guitar. Aim the light at the world. All right. Here we are in Texas. See the tape? Can you all see? Maybe they have on the screen. As the world turns, when the sun goes down, you're in the dark part right here. You can see over here, it's getting into the light part here. When a day ends is at sundown. This is when a new day begins. As the sun comes up, the day's already been going. You're supposed to keep the Sabbath when it comes to you. When it's Sabbath here in Texas, it may not be other parts of the world. But you keep the Sabbath when it comes to you. Because the world is always turning like this and the sun's shining on it. That's a pretty bright light, isn't it? You enjoying that? <laughs> okay. I just wanted to give you a little visual to help understand that. The Bible says from evening to evening, you celebrate your Sabbath. Good job, Mitchell. I appreciate that. So, you know when Jesus died? Jesus died right about sundown. You want to hear something amazing? Jesus even kept the Sabbath in his death. See, Jesus spent his life working to save humanity. When he died on the cross, you know one of the last things he said? He said, it is finished. And then he died. He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he died. He went to sleep. And he rested through the Sabbath. He kept the Sabbath even in his death. And then he rose Sunday morning, not to rest. He rose Sunday morning to continue his work for us as high priest. That's how important it is to Jesus. And the disciples would not finish embalming or wrapping up Jesus' body Friday afternoon. They said, the sun is going down. We're not quite done mummifying or wrapping up his body. We'll come back Sunday morning. Because the disciples knew that would not make Jesus happy to continue working on the Sabbath day, even that labor of love. So it says, they returned and prepared spices and fragrant ointments. Then they rested. Notice here, they rested the Sabbath according to the commandment. Was the commandment important to Jesus? Was it important to his disciples? Now on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb and praise the Lord, he had risen. He began his work in heaven as our high priest and he's alive there watching over us right now. So the preparation day is Friday. That's sometimes people call it Good Friday. Sabbath, Jesus slept, he rested in the tomb. He rose after the Sabbath on Sunday, the first day. Saturday is the seventh day. 
That's the Sabbath day. There's no question about it. No calendar change has affected that. What makes the Sabbath so special to God and to us? The Bible says the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he howled it. It's his holy day. It's the day he wants us to remember him. Did you know that we're even going to keep the Sabbath in heaven? You aware of that? Question number 10. Even in heaven, we're going to keep the Sabbath day after Jesus comes. For instance, how many know, did, they, did Adam and Eve keep the Sabbath in the Garden of Eden? Yeah. Yes. Did Moses and the children of Israel keep the Sabbath in the wilderness? Yeah. Yes. All through the Old Testament, did Jesus and the apostles keep the Sabbath? Yeah. Yes. The Bible tells us that even in the new heavens and the new earth that God is going to make, it says, for as the new heavens and the new earth that I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come and worship before the Lord. Even in heaven we're going to come and worship God. And guess who the preacher is going to be there? Jesus. And nobody's going to sleep during the church service then, right? You know, I heard about a boy named Bobby who one day was playing with his grandfather's special gold watch, little gold watch that had a flip case on it. And his mom said he had to go feed the chickens. So he stuck the watch inside his shirt pocket and he went out to feed the chickens. He forgot it was there. And he loved to jump in the hay. So he was jumping from the loft down into the piles of hay and he was playing and pretty soon he thought, where's grandpa's watch? His gold watch. What am I going to do? And he looked all through the hay and he couldn't find it and he was frantic. He thought, oh, I'll be in so much trouble. That was Grandpa's special watch. He got it when he retired from the railroad. Oh, I'm in big trouble now. And he was frantically looking all through the hay and digging around and he couldn't find it. Finally, he got on his knees and he was sobbing. He, he prayed and he said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry I was careless with Grandpa's watch. Please help me know where it is. Help me find it. And then while he was on his knees quietly praying, he heard tick, 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 tick. And what do you think it was? When he was finally quiet, he heard it. And he had to be real still. And he started sifting through the hay, and he'd be quiet, and he'd listen. And he'd sift a little more, and he narrowed it down until pretty soon he dug aside, and it tick, 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 and it was real loud. And he found the watch. But he had been so frantic looking before, he couldn't find that treasure. You know, sometimes the devil tries to keep us so frantic. Some homes today are just so much noise and the television's always going and the video games and there's just always things happening. And the devil wants to create so much noise we can't hear the Lord speaking to us. God has given us a day of rest to be still and to hear his voice, to recharge our batteries, to get a blessing to prepare us for heaven Every Sabbath is a little bit of heaven here now. And God wants you to have that blessing, friends. He wants you to have that rest on that holy special day. How many of you would like to have that blessing that God has in the Sabbath day? To hear His voice and to be ready for His coming. Let's pray now and ask Him to enjoy that. Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. That's what the Sabbath is all about. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for the truth that you love us and you want us to love you. That's why you've given us this holy day to set aside time to get to know you better and love you more. And as we love you more, Lord, to serve you better. I pray you'll bless all those who are watching and especially the children, that they'll love that special time, a day with a king that you provided for them. Fill them with your spirit. Continue to pour out your spirit and your blessings in this series that there might be a great revival of young people to serve you. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. You don't want to miss our next meeting. We're going to talk about God's super food, and you're going to really enjoy the lesson tomorrow. God bless you, those who are watching. Don't forget, you can still bring a friend. We'll see you then. In a world surrounded by darkness, there is a voice that whispers to every young heart, urging them to find the treasure of truth.
Those who follow the path will discover eternal riches beyond their wildest dreams. Pastor Doug Batchelor leads your kids on a powerful, soul-winning Bible study experience just for them. The 10-part series is filled with incredible Bible stories, exciting spiritual discoveries, and heartwarming music, all designed to help your kids stand with Christ for eternity. The most valuable thing that God ever gave to this world was His Word. Join us for an amazing adventure, a journey for life with Jesus. Order yours now. Take the journey. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. If you've missed any of our Amazing Facts programs, visit our website at AmazingFacts.org. There you'll find an archive of all our television and radio programs, including Amazing Facts Presents, Central Study Hour, Everlasting Gospel, Bible Answers Live, and Wonders in the Word. You'll also find a storehouse of biblical resources geared towards answering some of your most difficult questions. And our online Bible school is just a click away. One location, so many possibilities. AmazingFacts.org.